Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Day After Podcast and our sub-show, Lynchpin. Mike is here. I don't want to be. And we've decided that it's a good idea to watch uh, every David Lynch film in chronological order. Damn you, fate. <laughs> On episode three, we've discussed 1984 science fiction epic Dune, released in 1984, and based on the 1965 Frank Herbert novel, the same name. Michael has a friend who, when he was 16, watched this movie and said, Oh, you guys are going to watch Dune? I kind of liked it when I was 16. I am now 31 or some shit. He's 35 or something. Oh, six. fuck, he's an old bastard. <laughs> um, I, I have to have a serious talk with my friend now. <laughs> um, this is a fucking mess. It's so... What... I cannot bring to mind something that is such a failure on so many goddamn levels. Let me let me just uh, I I don't want to be outright mean to it right away, but here's what the what I'm the, what I'm the, here's the image I'm getting is you know when you walk into a hoarder's house and they're a very very bad hoarder, you're let you don't you less pity them, you more wonder what sort of finesse it took them to just so stack all these cans <laughs> of food they're never going to eat. On top of one another to make this giant spaceship of beans they didn't open. This tower of magazines. How structurally sound is it? How did you do that? How did you get uh, Patrick Stewart to show up on the magazine covers? <laughs> um, what a fucking mess! Oh my god! I just thought. I just thought it's when you said you you pitched this at the end of Elephant Man. Like like I thought it might be some sort of. I, I, like, I don't know, maybe it'll be, like, Waterworld bad. This is worse than No, Waterworld. yeah, this is much worse. And I, I knew that it was going to be, like, I knew this movie had a reputation. I was alerted to this when I heard that the, that David Lynch has completely disowned this movie, even to the point where the director's cut is directed by Alan Smithy. It gets actually worse. When you look at the, uh, the writing credit for, uh, for the director's cut, which is also David Lynch, he's replaced his name with uh, Judas Booth, as in Judas Is Iscariot and John Wilkes Booth. <laughs> I've heard defenders of this film going, oh, this was a studio botch. No, no, it is not. This is a disaster. This is broken. Um, you could not fix this by adding more. Of what David Lynch wanted. What I what I find the mo what I find the absolute most baffling is that the attempt to fix it involves a director's cut that is fifty that's five zero minutes longer. Fifty. Okay. Granted, that was four years after the movie came out. <laughs> I'm gonna mention this. Uh, in the last what was it ten minutes? You were asleep. I fell asleep with twenty minutes to go. Here here's here's our last. Go ahead. Yeah, I fell asleep with twenty minutes now, to go. You feel bad about that. I am not angry that you felt like, oh, you are disowning the movie. No, you left me alone to suffer alone, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I... <laughs> that is the most underwhelming epic battle I've ever seen in I a movie. I didn't wake up until it was over because there's no dialogue. It apparently is just shooting for 14 minutes and then somebody going, rain! <laughs> You forgot the what we really needed to, to finish this climax is let's have an underwhelming knife scene with Sting. And we're still having monologues as we're fighting. Jesus Christ. This, um... Okay, so, for, for those of you who, for some reason, don't know, I will think I'll try to summarize the plot. Um, in the future, spice is really important. With spice, it's basically shrooms that can power the DeLorean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying my best to shout away from the mic. Fuck. <laughs> it is the MacGuffin Angel Dust to end all <laughs> Angel Dust MacGuffins. 8,000 years in the future, it's on this planet we can't get to because there's fucking giant-ass worms everywhere. And it powers spaceships and whatever the fuck. And, and the there's some feudal family violence and, and the earth, romulets and capulets, and I don't fucking know. The earth is made of worms, and the, the earth is made of spice, and the worms are also made of spice. And the water, the thing, with the... I don't know! And here's the thing. I know that there are fans of this movie... That are going, well, you don't, you see, if you read the book, fuck Eat off. shit. Fuck off, okay? I don't care. And you know, like, they're going to be defending, like, but you see what he was 
trying to do is allude to this thing and it makes sense if you read the, the, no i don't care the first time i ever had that argument pulled on me was when my wife and i decided we're gonna sit down and watch divergent he goes well in the book i'm like honestly babe that movie did not do the book any favors yeah. and you i was surprised you said that there was there were criticisms of this movie that said it is not faithful to the novel and yet it is trying to cram stuff. How can you be that crammy and not be It's faithful? over two hours long. It, the, this is, it feels when you start this movie, like you're being punk. There is a woman who I fucking swear to God looks at the camera and speaks at you describing the plot for three minutes. Followed by a further scene which is just more exposition. So why did we have to listen to that person talk to us in the face for three minutes? It's like 10, it's 12 minutes of exposition, right? It's 12 minutes of exposition followed by another, we'll call it 20 minutes of preparation to go to this planet. There's half an hour gone before we even consider getting ready to go to the Dune planet. Cause we gotta get revved up. Cause guys, 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 what if Star Wars, but all Tatooine. Okay, okay, so, 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 okay, okay, you're, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, as, as a kid, um, this is not going to be a Star Wars discussion, but uh, everybody has that moment where they learn that Star Wars wasn't original for its time. No. The people that made Star Wars were huge fans of movies, like what would eventually become Dune. It, you know, the, the reason Star Wars is mega famous <laughs> they aren't all mega famous. This is what I imagine somebody trying to ape Star Wars would do. This is the year after Return of the Jedi comes out, and they don't know quite what makes Star Wars good. <laughs> so we're going to have this fight with a Dalek that has little spears. <laughs> and a Dalek, you're right. And it's, it's, it, it, it's really clearly aping that Jedi training montage yeah. from A New Hope. <laughs> <laughs> and when like uh what was it uh max von is like going is this uh, did you guys cast him because he kind of looks like uh guinness as oh god damn it as, as um obi-wan kenobi he really does he really <laughs> fucking does uh i made a mistake uh max von Sydow is uh one of my friends here favorite actors from one of my friends favorite directors and uh he did, i did that thing where late at night i was reading the tv tropes i was like oh max von Sydow's in there I better tell my friend before I fall asleep. And then he showed up on screen and my, my, Mike goes, what? And I'm like, Mike, I'm sorry. I swear to God, I, I wasn't keeping Max, that from leave. you. And he's in a lot of these, like, he's, he's phones in a lot of these epic sci-fi fantasy things. Because when you're in Seventh Seal, they give you fuck you money. Yeah. To but do there's, this movie has a, in the background, there are a lot of phenomenal actors to the point where there's basically um, a driving in a green screen scene where they're explaining some shit. I don't give a fuck what the fuck it was about. And it's the main character, some guy in the back. And on the left side of the screen is Patrick Stewart and Max von Sydow. As, as you said, Johnny, the, if, the, the weight of that acting caliber should have like- Crashed uh, the ship. <laughs> yeah, it should have unbalanced the car. You have- Patrick Stewart and Max von Sydow, and they're talking about drinking your scuba piss. They really, they really have a very it's such a waste of imagine talent. Imagine if in Back to the Future Two, at near the beginning, right, he lands in 2015. He's like, "Here, uh, wear this jacket. It'll, you know, it'll dry off when it stops raining." And here's the self lacing sneakers. Imagine if Christopher Lloyd then went into a two and a half minute tirade <laughs> about how. Well, the sneakers work because they feel the blood flow in your feet and then they dry off. And then the Nike thing, it can sense your blood pressure. So it knows when to whoosh. Oh, God. And it's so, it's so fucking full of itself. It's like th this world building. It, it just will take time to give you all the intricate details because it thinks it's so fascinating and important. This, this feels like somebody wrote their fan novel and i think that if you go to fan school when the on uh, during the lecture where they talk about jargon and the the pros and cons of jargon they should just play this movie in its entirety this is a wonderful example of how of world building done horribly um yeah you're like this is a great a great teaching by horrible example and just the the fucking voiceovers and the visions and the main character, every time he mouths some profound realization that he has, the spice and the worms, and the spice and the worms, and father Simba, and just 
Ugh. This movie has the absolute worst ADR I've ever. Not, not I don't mean bad ADR. I mean unnecessary. That, that this movie is terrified that you will not know what a character is thinking. And I fuck. I you sound like I'm being a, like a nitpicky critic style asshole. I'm being dead fucking serious. When two minutes go by and there's no ADR telling oh, yeah, me what I'm thinking. <laughs> There is no, yeah, no subtlety, it, um, no leaving the actors to their fucking craft. You had Patrick Stewart and Max von Sydow have voiceovers. They don't need it. They don't need it. <clears throat> hey, honestly, I kind of want to get high and then mute this movie and then watch it. Because th that's what is the most infuriating. It's beautiful. It is really good. It's, on, it's honestly, I, I would be okay if it was beautiful because that implies throughout. I, it, it's beautiful in very splotchy patches. Yes. Like, <laughs> like, like, like giant pus balls on a face. I was going to say like that cow hanging upside down. <laughs> <laughs> really strange beauty marks right over this really that's, gross fucking face. That's really fucking of gross. Of a movie. Yeah, it's really fucking <laughs> gross. Um, what, what bothers, I was starting to think and I, I, I let it sink and I, I don't think I can call it my the movie I hate the most because this is a really this is a this is a nine a negative nine out of ten if I've ever seen one yeah uh and it's that much fun to rip off to riff off of um I, I I found out I hate I absolutely detest movies that throw money at something and don't know where to throw it at so it becomes a bloated fucked up mess that costs way more than it should have how much did it cost forty million dollars holy shit. <laughs> okay. And I wish I had more context for how uh you know much fucking money that was probably 40 years ago. This movie's almost 40 years old. Uh and it fucking where wh why did you spend all the money there? I'm looking at the background at some test tubes that are clearly black latex they've fucking duct taped together. Like when the set is done, what fucking amazing comic book collector is going to be like, got to give me the background props for Dune. Mm, yeah. This movie feels like it was an example to other, to, to the future sci-fi epics. It, it seems like the, a lot of movies looked at this and went, oh, that's not, that's how you don't do it. And I can see some influences. Uh, like, I would like to know if the, if the set design of the Chronicles of Riddick had any was influenced at all by this. What makes you feel that way? Because I don't have any experience knowing quite... I, like, it's a Chronicles already because something like I know. Um, imagine if... Is it related to Blade? Is it look... Is it fit visually similar no. to Blade? Okay, imagine well, if, me. um, if Geiger wanted to do medieval stuff. Okay. Um, and the, the, the like, the, the royal, the, the royalty of this movie and the palaces, it comes across as, like, this, uh, this very s strange, uh, or organic feudalism i wonder if that if they were going for that at all anyway um i'm trying to say something positive i'm sorry <laughs> you know no 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 you don't have to be you could you can but there's so many scenes where it's like you can tell lynch you don't want to be making this movie do you you okay, want to be you want to be zooming a, in on let, water let, droplets let's take a break yeah, oh my god let's take a break and talk about uh clear david lynchian inspiration because he detested being able being attached to this project because he did not get final cut privileges he did not to get to say this is how the movie is going to look now we're done uh so there are pieces in there of how the the care of david showing up uh off the top of my head with the lots of gratuitous open mouth worm shots where you can see very well lined teeth infinity yeah. like that like like rows of grain of yeah. teeth in the in the worm yeah also to get on top of the worm for the electric guitar segment <laughs> We have these spades that we stick in the scales of the worm, twist open, and you can see the guts, like pieces of melted cheese. That in was there. nice. That's yeah. really good. There are just moments where somebody bleeds out out of a hole in their chest. <laughs> and that is, that's gross. Yeah, that was gross. There's, there's, there's a really a bizarre scene that absolutely sets the tone for this movie where a woman says, Mike, put your hand in this box. <laughs> if you pull it out... That means you're a pussy and I'm going to kill you. <laughs> or uh, let's see if I can describe this scene. Uh, there's a scene where a floating fat bastard <laughs> um, has pus extracted from his face. And then kind of f then he decides to push a button and float. Then um, take a shower in 
brown ink or mud and then become a, a nipple vampire. He goes up to his, a boy and tears off his nipples and sucks his life juice out. It, yeah, that happens. I don't think that this, like it has interesting visuals, but again, I want to make this point. I don't think that if, if Lynch had full control, he could have done it. I think, honestly, I think this I, was, this I'm, was flawed at the beginning. I, I'm honestly, if you see, there is so much wrong with this. I refuse to believe that David can totally skirt responsibility. Yeah. And I, I absolutely, this is, not just the this is so fucking impenetrable. Guys, real life fact. When this movie came out, it got an, a, 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 a notorious reputa reputation for being so hard to follow the plot. They were giving out uh, summary pamphlets of the plot of this movie to people on opening night. Guys, fucking open your goddamn eyeballs. People get, there's an XKCD comic that goes, okay, every, every novel, every piece of fiction, you get five jargon words. <laughs> After that, it starts passing through your brain or right off of it. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure they thought they were clever as fuck that, oh, spice, that's different from from oil or uh, or hyper juice. Yeah. Herbert, what were you, th why did you name it spice? I mean, I know you were probably thinking like, oh, some British imperialism thing in India and stuff, but it's every time they get obsessed with spice and start talking about it, I can't stop cracking up. This is I need spice to expand my consciousness and fold space. What? What? This, this sounds like an episode of Axe Cop, and that's not a good thing at all. Uh, what worse sin could an adaptation have than that, making that, me... that makes you disinterested in the? Yeah, it did that for me with Divergent. I mean, I, I was never gonna watch read Divergent anyway, but. The, I could at least a competent, you know, version of uh, a source material should make at least make you go. I do want to know what the Chamber of Secrets is. I don't like don't don't I want to know the entire full fledged story of these families in this world. No, no, I do not. And it does one of the worst things a movie can do is feel crammed and then tell me I just watched the shortest version of this movie at an hour. And another hour. <laughs> and an hour and another hour. Is and the then 15 minutes. Uh, I have a passing comment before we wrap because there's nothing you could talk about with this movie besides just a summary of the scenes. Uh, somebody I guarantee, I don't guarantee you, I'm quipping, uh, went up to a professional musician Sting and said, you want to be in this movie? And he said, sure. He's like, we're going to put you in a Speedo. Okay, let me run five miles a day. That explains a damn. Yeah, he is ripped. He is ripped as fuck in this movie. Like if if hey, if you want clicks, maybe that should be the thumbnail. Oh, I just get Sting in his feet. Honestly, the people that recognize Sting or recognize Dune are gonna be so mad. We're trashing this movie. <laughs> really? I like I, I God, I want to go up to the fans of the novel and go. You think this thing does it justice? Really? What? This this adaptation does justice to your beloved book? I'm astonished. I would be so surprised. I, well, I want to know. This is what clicked for me weird. I had a Spartacus moment. This is the movie everybody's excited about getting remade in 2021 by oh, Dennis yeah. Villanueva. What? Why is that? Blade Runner 2049. I didn't oh, like th that. that's him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can kind of get half the hype. If you <sighs> let the Blade Runner guy at this, a movie that you were prepared to live and die and bleed yourself out <laughs> unless it was perfect. And you're like, John, it's fantastic. I I think I can get the hype now, but there's not a lot you can do that's going to worsen this piece. Of I don't know. I'm not sure if I want to. Uh, I have to wait a few years because this plot needs to get out of my head yeah i mean I, I need I'll, it out. i'm gonna be thinking about this when i'm trying to go to sleep so, tonight take uh take my nipple valve off get it out of me you really said that let it leak out <laughs> solid solid reference uh i googled david lynch marathon and there are a lot of really silly reddit threads like i'm gonna watch every david lynch movie what's the right order and the only logical order is chronologically <laughs> And, and but every every list also is like don't worry about Dune. You can skip it. I mean, well, I, I don't. He didn't say skip it. He just said don't get worried for David. <laughs> because you said a couple of times about two thirds through the movie, how did David have a job after Dune? Oh yes, that's. I mean, this this costs so much money. It 
It actually it, it bombed, but not that bad. It only lost about ten million dollars. This is danger zone for a career. This early, yeah. I, I told you, my I'm like Mike. You you have to understand. It was Elephant Man and Eraserhead were so good. This man had already built credit up. And I guess this is. I mean, maybe this. My last thought is. Ultimately, this movie is harmless because it didn't hurt anybody. David Lynch went on to better things. The main actor went on to better things. David, better Lynch movies. David Lynch would make uh, seven more movies. Patrick Stewart has his entire career in film ahead of him. He's okay. Max von Sydow is going to be the death for all of eternity. He's going to be exiled into another desert in Judge Dredd. Brad Dorif uh, <laughs> is going to go back to voicing Chucky in Child's Play. <laughs> So it's all good. We just had, it's a bad dream. Yeah. We had some bad spice. Oh, God. fuck off. <laughs> Guys, that's been our discussion here on week three of uh, Lynchpin, where we, uh, against our better judgment, watch and review every David Lynch film in chronological order. Please, uh, the pleasure of joining uh, Mike and a blindfolded myself for a viewing of 1986's Blue Velvet. That... Uh Okay, I've seen it once, and I did enjoy it, I, but it's been a while. So. Oh, and please don't turn into a rando where you're like, I watched it when I was younger, and this is pretty good. I like the time where the guy wants to be a baby and go into the vagina. I don't know anything about Blue Velvet. <laughs>